Hello and welcome to CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had over 7 million minutes viewed on YouTube. This week we focus on Jersey Boys, the musical. I spent the last 15 years reviewing theatre around the world, and this is not just a feel-good show, it's a fabulous show. Do not think Jersey Boys is just another songbook full of cheesy, money-making production numbers. You couldn't be more wrong. This is a play set to music. The show has great emotion and a fascinating, well-written storyline with true grit and edge telling the story of the creation of the Four Seasons. Jersey Boys has an incredible playlist of 25 of the greatest songs from the soundtrack of our lives. You'll love every second of Sherry, Walk Like a Man, Can't Take My Eyes Off You and December 63. Oh, what a night. The band are phenomenal and they appear throughout the production on stage and off. The sound guys take this production seriously. Breathtaking at times, actually. This show attracts some of the world's best musical theatre talent. On Broadway, there's Jared Spector. In Las Vegas, there's Rick Fornio. And in London, they have Ryan Malloy. It has to be said, to be able to perform as Frankie Valli for two and a half hours, eight times a week, you've got to have pure talent. These guys are at the top of their game. This show repays every penny in visuals vocals and the feel-good factor. It's no wonder this sellout show is celebrating five years in the West End and has been on Broadway for nearly ten. It continues to tour around the world and sell out box offices wherever it goes and it's not surprising because the costumes are fantastic. It takes us back to a better time, the 60s and the 70s, when music really mattered and how difficult it was even then to stay grounded. This show tells the story of integrity. So rare in the music industry these days, Bob Gordon wrote the music Frankie Valli was the voice together on a handshake they had trust and they had huge talent and they took the world by storm with some of the most memorable pieces of music in history as far as I'm concerned this is one of the most credible songbook musicals ever written you can't fail to be impressed by some of the saucy antics that go on there is some strong language in this musical it is certainly not Disney through thick and thin, Bob Gordio and Frankie Valli fought on to create The Four Seasons, one of the greatest bands in the world, and you get to experience their journey throughout this musical. It tells a story of love and loss, and of course the pain and anguish of show business. I love Jersey Boys the musical. For me, it's a five-star musical playing around the world. Starring the music of Bob Gordio and Frankie Valli, who will play you an exclusive interview now with. This was recorded in Las Vegas. I hope you enjoy the creation of the Four Seasons in conversation with me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz. Don't miss Jersey Boys the Musical, five star, from Celebrity Radio. Here's Frankie and Bob. Welcome back to Las Vegas. It's Alex Belfield talking to two of my favourite people who have created some of the world's most popular music. Frankie Valley, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Bob Gordio, how are you? How are you? Good, nice to see you again. Do you know why you're smart? You created music that was relevant 30 years ago, and it's still here, and it's still being played, and it's still contemporary. How have you managed that? Probably a lot of prayer. And, and, and lighting candles and stuff like that. I'm not sure I call it smart as maybe lucky. Uh, look, it's uh, who knows. We've been very fortunate with films and commercials and the songs, the usage of, of the songs over the years has uh, been perfect. You know, it doesn't hurt to be the lead off song in Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Are you trying to say that our career was all about playing cards and gambling? Well, I think yeah, it's, it's always a gamble, isn't it? Listen, it's really nice to talk to you. And here we are in Las Vegas. You're celebrating the second anniversary of your musical, Jersey Boys. And it's gone down a storm here. And it's wonderful in London. It wasn't necessarily going to be, was it? Well, it was really tremendous, uh, especially uh, the fact that the, the London cast is probably one of the most brilliant of, of all of them. Uh, I, I truly enjoyed them immensely, and I think Bob felt the same way about the London cast. How does it feel to see someone doing you? Ryan is doing his interpretation of me, and he does it incredibly well. Uh, I, he's really a, a magnificent actor. I've got to ask you the question about you two. Who's the biggest genius, him for his voice or you for the writing? Well, you know, we were just talking about a thing we did in a, in a show that uh, when we played the Copacabana and the name of it, the, the piece of special piece of material was How Do You Write a Hit Song? And, and it was about that. My view, Frankie's view, Tommy's view, and so on. So I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> Frankie? Uh, I, I take the fifth. <laughs> and as for the music itself, how do you get a great tune to be remembered and played again and again and again? Because we look at so many of your hits and they're still being played and they're loved. Is there any recipe for that? 
I think a great song is always a great song. I really think that that's the way it starts. It's uh, to have a hit record, you have to have a hit song. You can have a great production and a great performance and an incredible arrangement. If you don't have a hit song, you're not going to have a hit record. It's really that simple. And that's part of the drama of this show, Jersey Boys, getting that first hit song. And thanks to you, they did. Yeah, well, I don't know about thanks to me. It was, you know, it was just a magical combination. Uh, you know, wh what would Sherry be, uh, what would it sound like if Barry Manilow sang it? I, I love Barry, okay? But, you know, <laughs> I mean, there's just certain magic that happens with the right chemistry all comes together. The voice, the, the, the song, the track, the musicians and all. And, you know, and that was one of those times. Now so. it's not gambling, it was no. magic. <laughs> I mean, we went from gambling to magic. <laughs> and tell me about what it's like to be one of the biggest stars in the world and fronting a group that everybody's heard of. Does that ever become normal? I really don't know, to tell you the truth. I never looked at it that way, you know? But it is true, isn't it? I, 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 I never looked at, at myself as being one of the big stars in the world. I love what I do, and I probably would be doing it if it were for $6 a night and there were no success. I'd be working in some little bar. I walk through the door here at the Venetian, and the first thing I hear is, if it weren't for us, there wouldn't be the Beatles. What were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, here we go. No, we were talking about, uh, we were forced into trying to do what everyone else was doing when we first had success, and that was perform, say like the Four Tops, you know, uh, get out with the microphone, do the choreography, and so on. And uh, we tried it one time, and uh, it, it, the promoter nearly was annihilated because we just couldn't deal with it. So, um, but we picked up instruments and started playing. So that was the thing, you know. If it wasn't for us, the Beatles wouldn't have uh, uh, known they should be playing their instruments and not doing choreography. <laughs> of course, it's a joke. <laughs> Hopefully a, a better one than it sounds. It makes a good bit of print though, doesn't it, for the British newspapers. We created the Beatles. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Very finally before we go, I just want to talk to you about your proudest moment and the thing that really made you think we've made it. What has been the, the lasting memory of show business? There must be so many, but just a highlight. I wouldn't even know where to begin. I mean, for me, everything from the fact that uh, when I was just a kid, uh, my mom took me to see Frank Sinatra for the very first time I'd ever seen anybody on a stage. And then later on, becoming friends. Uh, and, and all of the various things that have gone on. We've had the opportunity to work with Sam Cooke and, and Jackie Wilson and Jerry Butler and Gladys Knight and Ike and Tina Turner, and I mean, and the list goes on, you know, where do you, and have a play that's a big hit on Broadway, I don't know what, you know, it's all been great. And my final question to you, Bob, when you see your name on the billboards and Jersey Boys is all over the world, did you ever think it would come to this? Well, I've been writing the score for this for 40 years, you know, <laughs> of course. No, I, you know something, I, I want to answer the same question you asked Frankie, because the, the, the biggest treat for me was winning the Tony Award for Jersey Boys and then the Olivier Award. Now, boy, how much better does it get? You didn't just win one either, did you? <laughs> no, we've won a number of them. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just such a, a thrill to have that happen. Uh, what a way to go out, huh? Well, all I'd like to say is that, that, that Bob and, and, and my relationship has lasted longer than any of my marriages. Or his. <laughs> I mean, and it all started with a handshake. It, and it did, right. Uh, you know, it's really, it, w I think it's a great chemistry. Uh, it, everything about what's gone on in my life, uh, even when I look at the, at the times where I was wishing that more was going on, uh, when it went full cycle, it, it it developed into something that I never, ever would have ever imagined in my life. Congratulations on being part of my show every single day. It's really nice to meet you both, Bob and Frankie. Thank you. Thank you. You too.